Almost everything in this class is about equilibrium. So I want to hit this once again. That when we're talking about equilibrium, there are certain steps that we're going to follow. And really this goes from 2D particles all the way through systems at the end of the semester. One of the things that I know students have trouble with is they get to a problem and they cannot see how to solve it. What I want to suggest to you is if you'll just follow along with me, chances are good that by the end of it you'll actually have some equations that you can work with. So start by reading the problem. Um, I, I emphasize that again because there are always things in the problems that students miss. So be very careful when you're reading it to make sure you know what you're looking for and what you have. Drawing a free body diagram is crucial. If you can't get a, a complete and accurate free body diagram, you've got no chances down here. So when we're going to do that, especially with a 3D particle like this plate hanging from the three cords in the ceiling, be careful to pick your object. It's true in all of our free body diagrams, but here you want to find out where all of the forces that you're going to be dealing with are concurrent. The weight of the plate acts down here, but the place where all of our forces are concurrent are up here at D. So we're going to draw the free body diagram of that place up there at D. When you draw that, you've got to ask yourself how many forces exist on my free body diagram. You're going to have the three chords, it's true, but when you're looking at a ceiling, you've got a hook going into a ceiling. If it can't move this way, then you have a force, a reaction force in that way. If it can't move this way, then you have a reaction force this way. If it can't pull out of the ceiling, then you have a reaction force that way. So you're going to have all three reaction forces up at that ceiling. Now, in reading this particular problem, you'll see that two of them you can set equal to zero. Well, all three should still exist on your free body diagram. Once you've got that, you want to find out what your loads are and get them all into Cartesian form. In this particular case, you're given cords are 30 degrees to the vertical and you've got these three angles. This is a projection in a plane. And again, I will say, the most important thing is to classify the forces because once you've classified them, then you know what to do with them. It's just a slightly easier way to uh, approaching all of these things. If you go ahead and run through your mind, is this projection in a plane, direction, cosines, magnitude in a long line, whatever it is, if you can name it, then you can get to the mnemonic of what am I supposed to do with it. Your equations of equilibrium, and yes, I did that on purpose, you're going to write the sum of the forces in X, sum of the forces in Y, sum of the forces in Z. All of these things will let you solve. Now, in your givens and your loads, you're going to have to read the problem carefully and see what it is they're looking for. Problems come in many different varieties. We'll ask for different things. Make sure that the answer you give is the answer to the question that the problem was looking for. And don't forget at the end, and in the middle, and at all steps in the, along the way, to make sure that your answer makes some sense. Because if you're doing things without stopping to say, are the forces I have really matching the forces that are given in this problem, you're much more likely to make a mistake.